Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. Before we begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine, here's a reminder that for real ease and convenience, you can't beat a Chevron National Credit Card. Honored in the West by independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations and by other leading oil companies throughout the rest of the United States and Canada, a Chevron National Credit Card is your key to new driving pleasure. No need to carry extra cash when you travel for gas, oil, and other purchases. Just charge it. Your receipt is an accurate, permanent record for tax and budget purposes, too. Here in the West, your Chevron National Credit Card brings you better products, finer service, with added ease and convenience at every standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. The Iron Hat, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. You have uh, Mr. Valentine, I suspicion. Well, how did you get in? Now, uh, that is a phenomenal question. I walked. (laughs) Yeah, so I see. What I mean is Miss Brooks usually announces my call. Yeah, 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 I know. But don't be hard on a girl. I told her I wanted to castigate with you about what I'm for me. Uh, yeah, very interesting. Except I'm not interested. So, uh, unless you've got a better offer... I am. Okay, let's get to it. I am stipulated to offer you your regular fee for a few days to forget about that letter for Cornelius. To what? Let us not be circumlocutary. You heard me. Forget you ever got the letter and you get reinstated just the same as he was going to do. Now, look, I I think this is real nice of you, but I don't quite catch on. Uh, Maybe that's because I'm not bright. Uh, Just who is Cornelius? Oh, a wise guy, huh? Are you trying to integrate you might make more money with him, huh? (laughs) Well, the fact is, Buster, I just don't integrate at all. Yeah, I guess you don't. Hey, now, wait a minute. What's the idea of the gun? Just so you will recollect you ain't playing marbles with no kids, Valentine. Now, uh, you're going to forget all about Cornelius? Why should I? He's a very nice guy, one of my bosom friends. No way. Are you asking to be plugged? Give me that letter he wrote you. Uh, yeah, I see what you mean. If Cornelius' autograph means so much to you, I'll be happy to turn it over. Now, let's see. I, uh, I had that letter right here somewhere. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Uh, Hey, what the... All right, get out of here. I said, give me that. And I don't think you need that gun, either. You might hurt somebody. Oh, yeah. You got away from me. Yeah, I think you would, too. Sorry, Buster. I'll keep that gun for you until you grow up. Now, scram. George, what happened? That's all right, Brooksy. This character integrated that I had some correspondence he was interested in. That's all. He what? Never mind. Show the gentleman out, will you? I think our business is finished. Why, you... I'll get you for this. Just wait till the boss hears what you did. Yeah, but I won't hold my breath. Tell your boss I'm not interested in running for mayor, huh? You wish you hadn't persecuted this Valentine. You going just a little too far. Well, what was that? Why are you holding that gun? Huh? Oh, this. Just a little souvenir I picked up. Ah, silly, the people they let go around carrying guns. Well, any business this morning, Angel? No, nothing interesting. Some bills and circulars and a silly letter. Skip the bills and circulars. What's the letter say? Oh, it's nothing you'd be interested in, George. Oh, Angel, my curiosity. (laughs) Well, all right. Here it is. Dear Mr. Valentine, yesterday I was practically ready to blow the lid off the city. 
Today I can't do it unless you feel strongly enough about integrity in government to get back some evidence that was stolen from me. If you're interested in such a job at your regular fee, please come to my office as soon as possible. Ah, some screwball. Forget it. Letterhead, the Iron Hat Restaurant, signed Robert Cornelius. Cornelius, huh? That's right. Do you know him? Not yet. Funny thing, that name was integrated in the conversation when my last caller was here. Now, see you later, Brooksy. I'm going to meet the owner of the Iron Hat. Okay, Mr. Cornelius, let's start from scratch. I know you own one of the most famous restaurants in town, and I know you're sort of a crusader for clean government, so let's take it from there. Well, rather, let's get right to the point, huh? Valentine, up until yesterday, I had in my safe documented proof of more graft and corruption than you'd believe possible. Up until yesterday? That's right. Night before last, somebody broke into this office, opened the safe, and got away with some very important papers. Uh Uh-huh. Did you report it? No. And for a very good reason. There are some big names involved. If they put the wrong men in the case, I'd get nowhere. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Tell me, Mr. Cornelius, who has access to that safe besides yourself? Only two people. G.J., that's G.J. Osborne, my partner, and my secretary. Mr. Cornelius, the man from the meat company, is it? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know there was someone in your office. Oh, that's all right. I was just talking about you, my dear. About me? Yes. Uh, Valentine, this is Alice Medill, my secretary. Mr. Valentine is here about the theft, Alice. Oh, oh yes. Well, do, do you think you'll be able to do anything about it, Mr. Valentine? I don't know. Got any ideas yourself, Miss Medill? Oh, no. I guess whatever was taken was quite important to Mr. Cornelius. It was in a large manila envelope. Yes, that's right. But you see, Valentine, they didn't get quite as much as they might have. No? Why not? Well, that envelope held only part of my evidence. The rest... Yes, I understand. Uh, well, uh, thank you, Miss Medill. I'll want to have a little talk with you later. Yes. All right, Mr. Valentine. I'll tell the man from the meat company to wait, Mr. Cornelius. Uh, yes, uh, please do, Alice. Well, you somehow acted as though you suspected Alice Valentine. I don't think you need to. Oh, sorry. I just suspect everybody, that's all. Oh, yes, of course, I understand. Matter of fact, I've already got a lead to go on. Oh, you have? Yeah, something you wouldn't know about. Uh, tell me, Mr. Cornelius, uh, what were some names mentioned in those documents that were stolen? Well, a few police officers, some public officials who've been playing the game for their own profit, a gangster named Harger... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Say that last one again. Oh, wouldn't, you wouldn't know the man. He isn't the type whose name appears in the papers. But he runs more rackets in this city than you'd believe possible. The name was Harger. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. So wait, you you know him? Unfortunately, yes. Yes, I've run into him a couple of times. Did he know you had this evidence? Mm, He must have suspected it, yes. Why? Because now I think I see where to start on your case, Mr. Cornelius. A very unpleasant character who looked like one of Harger's hoodlums called on me this morning. But, uh... Well, how did he know... That you'd written to me? Well, that's what I'd like to find out. And it seems to me there's no better time to do it than right now. Just a minute. Just a minute. What right have you... Yeah, hello, Harger. Mind if I come in? Well, what can I say? It seems you already have. Yeah, that's right. Let me see. You would be, uh, Valentine. George Valentine, I believe. Good memory. Yes, thank you. Well, what can I do for you? Well, now, maybe it's the other way around. One of your hoods dropped in to suggest that I stay away from the Bob Cornelius case. But, oh, (laughs) you must be mistaken, Valentine. I don't even know what you mean. Well, then perhaps I'd better make it plainer. How would you like to have your boy picked up for assault with a deadly weapon? What? And how would you like to be mixed up in a case of breaking and entering burglary? Now, just a minute, young man. If you're trying some kind of black... Who did you hire to take some papers out of Cornelius' safe, Hogger? And where are they now? Oh, really, Valentine, this is getting to be amusing. You seem to have forgotten I'm an honest businessman. I run the bowling alley out there, the cocktail bar... All right, all right, skip that. I just thought you'd like to save yourself a little trouble, that's all. You see, I happen to have a little souvenir right here. Oh, a gun. Well, you'd better not start anything. Oh, don't worry. It's not loaded. I took out all the bullets. 
But I thought your lackey might like to have it back. Yes, I see what you mean. Silly of him to leave it, wasn't it? Cedric! Sure you don't want to trade it for some papers? I don't make trades, Valentine. Uh, do you ascertain me, boy? Yes, yes, Cedric. You know this gentleman, I believe? Hey, it's a Valentine. Exactly. He was kind enough to bring back the gun you so carelessly left in his office. Now, wait a minute. If you think I'm going to... In case he feels like changing his mind, Cedric, I have him covered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, boss. Come on, big boy. Pass it over. Uh, yeah. My, my. How brave you are when your boss is holding a gun. I said give me the gun. Certainly, sure. Here you are. Now, that is the idea, Valentine. And I believe our little interview is now over, yes? For now, yes. Oh, what possible reason would we have for continuing it? You've gained nothing. Oh, but I have, Hugger. I wasn't at all sure when I came in here that you engineered the theft of those papers. And now you think you are sure? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid oh. you'll have a hard time proving that, Valentine. I like it that way. Oh, and one more thing, Hugger. Yes? You might be interested to know that you got only part of the papers. Hey, uh, wait a minute. What is he in Be quiet, for? Cedric. Go on, Valentine. All right, if you're going to look for them, they won't be in Cornelius' safe. Any deals from now on, you take up with me. Get enough to eat, Brooksy? Mm, Yes, George. It doesn't like you to stop for lunch when you're on a job. Well, I had to kill a few minutes. Mr. Cornelius wasn't in his office back there. The secretary said he'd be back in half an hour. Oh. But even if you're so sure Harger had somebody steal those papers, what good's it going to do to see Cornelius again? I didn't want to tell his secretary, just in case she was mixed up in this thing some way. But I'm going to have him give the rest to me. You are? Well, won't they try to get them from you? Well, I hope so. Then we'll have something definite to work on. Okay, let's get back to Cornelius' office. I'm worried, George. Yeah, why, Angel? Well, if they're so desperate to get those papers, something might happen to you. I'll be ready for them, don't worry. Here we are. That's funny. No answer. Maybe the secretary's gone out and he isn't back yet. Yeah. I may as well wait inside. Go ahead, Angel. After you. All right. My, this is a nice... Oh! Brooksy, what's the matter? Over, over there by the safe, George. That girl. Alice Medill. Who? The secretary. Wait there a minute. Yes. Is George... Is she dead? No. No, but I don't know why not. Somebody really let her have it with that lead pipe. What do we do? Shut the door, then call Lieutenant Johnson on the phone. This isn't a case for him yet, but it's liable to be if we don't get her to a hospital. In just a moment, we'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Did you ever stop to consider that the cost of operating your car depends a great deal on the motor oil you use? It's true, and it's one of the main reasons why most motorists here in the West prefer heavy-duty RPM motor oil that doubles engine life the time between major overhauls due to lubrication. Yes, we claim heavy-duty RPM compared to premium-type oils as designated by the American Petroleum Institute doubles engine life. Actual performance tests prove it. For instance, taxi cabs operated by Tanner Motor Tours of Las Vegas, Nevada, used to average only 35,000 miles between overhauls. Today, with heavy-duty RPM, these same cabs travel 100,000 miles before overhauling. Developed through atomic research, RPM was tested in the laboratories, proved in actual road tests. Even in the tough daily grind of taxi cab operation... Heavy-duty RPM stood the test, more than doubled engine life. So remember these facts when you buy oil. For top protection and top economy of operation, switch over now to heavy-duty RPM motor oil at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations, where they say and mean 
We take better care of your car. Now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. You suddenly find yourself on a case that you've been warned to forget even before it's been offered to you. You've definitely found out that a big-time gangster named Harger was behind the theft of valuable documents from a safe in the Iron Hat restaurant. But you haven't expected to find a girl slugged senseless and the rest of the papers missing. If your name is George Valentine, you wait impatiently in Robert Cornelius' office for Lieutenant Johnson to finish a phone call. She has not there. Okay. See that a policewoman is in her room at all times. If she ever regains consciousness, get a statement. Post two officers outside the room. Yeah. Call me when anything happens. Okay. She's still alive, isn't she, Lieutenant Johnson? Yes, if you can call it that. Bad concussion. They're working on her. What's the matter with your identification, boys? They dusted that lead pipe in the safe an hour ago. What do you think they do, Valentine? Work miracles? Takes time. Yeah, I suppose. By the way, how'd you get mixed up in this thing? Cornelius sent for me after the first bunch of stuff was stolen. I was going to take the rest until we cleared it up. Except somebody beat you to it. Where's Cornelius now? Well, he seems to have disappeared. Yeah, yeah. Got any idea who might have pulled this job? Sure, sure I have, Johnson. Ever heard of a gunsel named Cedric? He uses big words in the wrong places. Cedric Allen? The professor? Then you do know him. Sure, sure, a small time hood. We've had him in for questioning time after time. George, you mean the same one who came in the office this morning? The same, Brooksy. You see, Johnson, this... Wait a minute, I'll get it. Hello, Johnson speaking. Yeah, yeah, what'd you get? You what? Yes, I heard you, but that can't be... Oh, never mind. Okay, I'll call you back. What was it, Lieutenant? Identification Bureau. Fingerprints check with the Cedric character? No, I can't understand it. No make it all? Oh, sure, sure. We got to make all right. The prints on the safe and that length of pipe are harger. The... Are you positive? The boys are. Nice, clean prints. A perfect thumb and forefinger. No question. Well, I'll have the big shot picked up. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe this isn't smart, Johnson. Yet. No? Why not? Well, there's something very fishy about this. You know as well as I do that Harger doesn't go in for this sort of thing. Well, what about the prints? It just might be that somebody's framing Harger, you know. Somebody who works for him, maybe. Valentine, sometimes I think you read too many detective stories. The pipe, maybe. But how about the safe? Okay, okay, go ahead. Have Harger picked up if you want to. I got another tack to work on. George, where are you going? My friend Cedric paid a call on me this morning. I'm going to get his address from the Ident Bureau and return it. address you got from the files, George. Yeah, okay. You stay behind the wheel, Brooksy, and keep the motor running. I'll be out in a minute. Oh, that's a horrible-looking place. George, please be careful. Yeah, sure, I'll be careful. This won't take long. Yeah? Who's that? Got a message for Cedric. Yeah? Well, Cedric ain't here. He just left. Won't be back for a while. That's all right. I'll come in and wait. Hey, wait a minute. What do you think you're trying to do? Push your way in here like that? No offense, that. I'm sure. Who are you? I'm Cedric's wife. You want to make something out of it? Hey, I never seen you before. That's my loss. Shut the door. Hey, look, I ain't you. What are you doing with a gun? Just encouraging you to shut the door. Yeah. Yeah, okay, but Cedric won't like this. It'll be our secret. He'll never know. How long has your husband been gone, Mrs. Uh, Allen, isn't it? That's none of your business. Hey, look, are you a cop? Of course not. Cedric and I have some business dealings. Well, nice place you have here. Mind if I look around? Sure, I mind. Well, with, with that gun pointing at me. Thanks. Hey, you better keep out of that drawer so Cedric wouldn't... wouldn't like it, I know. <laughs> no sale. You could help me, though, if you'd tell me just... He ain't going to hallucinate nothing to you, Valentine. Oh, 
Cedric. I didn't hear you come in. He busted his way in the door, Cedric. I tried to get him to... Shut up, Maggie. Drop the gun, Shamus. Well, now, I don't know why I should. That is just the influence. Yeah, I got bullets in this rod, I can see. Now drop the gun and I'll plug you. Uh, yeah, that sounds reasonable. Huh. That's showing your instinct. Now get out. All right, all right. But first tell me, Cedric... Why did you have to hit that poor girl so hard? She might not live, you know. I don't can see what you're talking about. Get him out of here, Cedric. He makes me nervous. Maggie, I told you to keep quiet. Just one more thing, Cedric. Don't you think it's dangerous to double-cross a big shot like Hager? <laughs> I ain't double-cross nobody, see? Now, like I said, get out. Thanks, I will. Stay in jail, old boy. Are you all right? He went in there. Yeah, I'm all right, Angel. Except I'm one is a perfectly good gun. I heard a shot. Yeah, I know. Just Cedric showing off. Come on, let's go. Well, all right, darling, but where? Headquarters. I got to have a few words with Lieutenant Johnson. Go ahead in, Brooks. Oh, all right, George. Hi, Johnson. Valentine, what are you doing here? Well, I thought I might help you a little. Well, what's got you in this mood? Arger. What's he done now, Lieutenant? Plenty. Had him picked up on the basis of those fingerprints. Yeah? And no sooner got him booked than his mouthpiece came in. Arger's got a perfect alibi. Slapped a half million dollar suit on the city for false arrest, defamation of character. Yeah, I was afraid he might do that. I warned you, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, but what can I do? Arger's fingerprints on the murder weapon. You mean the Medill girl's dead? No. Matter of fact, she's better. Still unconscious. Well, maybe we won't need her statement. If you'll stop being so know-it-all and do what I tell you to yeah, do. Yeah, 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 sure. Hit a man when he's down. Uh-uh, just trying to help you, that's all. Now, first, don't let Hager go. Keep him locked up. But that liable suit... We can wash that out, too. Then have the desk sergeant call Cedric Allen. Tell him Hager's in jail and wants to see him. If he hasn't got a phone, have him bring him in. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't make sense. Then but... let me talk to your lab man who did the make on those fingerprints. George... It doesn't make any sense to me either. I know, I know. Sounds pretty mixed up, doesn't it? I'm just playing a hunch. A hunch? We're in trouble enough already, and you're playing a hunch. Don't worry, Johnson. After something I saw in Cedric's house this morning, this is a hunch that'll pay off. Cedric, that you? What did Harker want? Didn't take you very long to... Oh, it's you again. Yeah, I came back for something I forgot. Your gun? Is that what you mean? Oh, yeah, that's right. Wasn't what I had in mind, but I'll take that too. Where is it? I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. I hate to treat a lady like this. Let go of my wrist. You... Ah, that hurts. Now, where's that gun? I'm not telling you. I... All right. That... that table drawer. Fine, thanks. Quite a place, that table drawer. I can get everything I need right there. What do you mean? Oh, I'm just taking along something I saw on my last visit. These gloves. Yeah, but you can't take those gloves. You can't. Oh, but I can, Maggie. Uh-uh, stand back. Like Cedric would say, I don't want to have to plug you. What, what are you going to do with them? Oh, yeah, that's what I thought. I said, what are you going to do? With these? Oh, just keep them for souvenirs. Mind if I use your phone? Thanks. I appreciate your hospitality, Maggie. I'm sure Cedric will, too. And Mr. Harger. Hello? Hello, Johnson. Yeah, who? Oh, Valentine. That's right. Cedric get there yet? Just came in. Look, Valentine, you're going to get us in a worse pickle with this Don't stuff. worry, Johnson. Everything's all right. Yeah? I wish I thought so. When Cedric finds out that Harger didn't send for him at all... I know, I know. That's what I called about. Don't let Cedric leave there. Put him under technical arrest until I get back. Valentine... Hang on to Harger, too. You'll have enough on both of them to send him up. Hang on to Brooksy, too, in a nice way, that is. And when we've washed this up, I'm going to take it to dinner. All right, Valentine, you wanted the floor, you've got it. And if you're wrong... Oh, I'm not, I'm not. I wasn't quite sure before, but now I know. Cedric. Yeah, what? Over in the receiving hospital is a girl on the point of death because you slugged her too hard. What do you mean? You got nothing on me. Maybe Hager, but not on me. I thought you'd try and rat out like that, save your own skin. 
That scheme Hogger cooked up backfired. Valentine, what's all this? You find Hogger's fingerprints on the safe and the lead pipe, Johnson. But he wasn't there when the safe was opened or when Miss Medill was slugged. Was he, Sedley? Sure he was. He had to be if his print uh-uh. was... Uh-uh. Hogger had a great scheme to get some papers he wanted and to sue for libel at the same time. He knew his prints would be in that office, and he knew he'd have a perfect alibi. George, can't you explain it to us? I guess these will explain best, Brooksy. Why, it's just a pair of rubber gloves. Plastic gloves, to be exact. With exact reproductions of Hogger's fingerprints on the thumbs and forefingers. You check this with Ident? Just came from there, Johnson. All right. Looks like you're going to be with us for quite a while, Cedric. Why'd you do it? She wouldn't open the safe. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Okay, I... Hey, that's enough. Lock him up, Sergeant. And thanks for the assist, Valentine. Not at all, Johnson. Glad to be of help. But, George, how did you ever know a pair of plain plastic gloves would be important? Got friendly with a fingerprint bureau, Angel? Tell you about it over a bowl of soup. Before you buy another gallon of gasoline, consider these facts. Any gasoline can be made to stress one feature at the expense of others. But Chevron Supreme Gasoline gives you the correct balance of all eight high-performance qualities. And every one of these qualities is necessary for top performance. Quick starting, smooth acceleration, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, fast warm-up, full power, area blending, and economy mileage. So ship to the gas with all eight. Ask for Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations or independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. George? Mmm, good soup. What'd you say, Brooksy? You never told me how you figured out that fingerprint thing. Simple reasoning, Angel. I got to thinking after I saw that pair of plastic gloves at Cedric's place. So I went to the boys who made the ident. And? That was a pretty heavy length of lead pipe. But the only prints on it were from the thumb and the forefinger. Oh, what did that prove? Well, just that nobody could swing the pipe hard enough to knock somebody out with just a thumb and finger. Oh, yeah, that's right. You see, with just those prints, Cedric would never be caught. But Hager would. But he'd prove an alibi, sue the city, and still have the papers he wanted. Oh, now I see. But Mr. Cornelius still hasn't gotten his papers back. Oh, he'll have them back in an hour. Cedric spilled everything. They're hidden in his house. And he'll probably get a life. Mm -hmm. You know, darling, as clever as you are, it's too bad some nice girl can't be with you all the time. Get the benefit of it? Mm Hmm. Oh, yeah. Sure is. But that's life, isn't it? No, George. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Bill Boucher as Cornelius, Gigi Pearson as Alice, Larry Dobkin as Harger, and Ted DeCorsia as Cedric. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>